Welcome to Tapped In with Tony. I am your host, Tony Bogan. And today, our guest is former Lutheran East head coach and now Bartow head coach, Tyler Eaton. Tyler, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Not a problem. It's a pleasure having you on. You uh, coached up here in Northeast Ohio. You have experience as a teacher. And now you're coaching down in Florida. Yes, sir. Um, so obviously, you know, I've been able to coach at um, in both both states, Ohio and Florida. Um, now on two separate occasions, I was the head coach at Lutheran East and then was an offensive coordinator at Davenport High School um, down in Florida um, in the same county, Polk County. Um, and then went back to university school and worked with Ben Malbasa uh, last year and, um, and now down here again in Polk County at Bartow. So I've been a been a coordinator in both states, been a head coach in both states, and um, yeah, I had a lot of fun, and, and we're certainly having a lot of fun here so far. I've been seeing the work you guys have been putting in. Looks like the kids are all bought in. You guys have spring football down there, which helps. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a little different. It was my first time, actually, since coaching college, um, you know, doing spring football, and, um, you know, we were, I got here, I think, the day before practice started, and and we rolled. We had four weeks, and, and and man, it makes such a difference when you have just that extra time to to install and to to work. You know, I, I was thinking about it um, a little bit, actually, comparing it to Lutheran East when I was the head coach there, and just thinking, you know, that was when COVID hit, so we didn't have scrimmages or or, or, or really much of anything. Um, and so just just the, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that just that time that we were able to to start and install and build and and, and work um, will really help translate to a quick start here in the season. Awesome. And um, tell us a little bit more about your background for those who are tuning in. Where are you from? What is your background? Did you play sports in high school and college? Yeah, for sure. So I played, um, pardon me, I, so I'm from Menor, Ohio, um, Northeast Ohio, born and raised. Um, went to university school uh, where I played uh, pretty much every sport, uh, but football uh, ended up being my thing. And had some success there. Uh, went to college, played at Lake Erie um, on a scholarship, um, and uh, right after jumped right into into college coaching at Lake Erie and then Greensboro College down in North Carolina. Then came back and coached at university school before as a as a defensive assistant. Um, then went to Lutheran East as the head coach at, at 25. Then jumped down to Davenport as an assistant head coach and offensive coordinator, where we um, we had one of the well we had the best receiver in the state receiving yards wise and number two quarterback in the state passing yards and he ended up being the quarterback ended up being offensive player of the year uh, for the ledger which is basically the newspaper for the tampa orlando area uh, one of the main newspapers there so he was we had a lot of success you know we, we finished record wise about 500 um, because we were a first year program but offensively we we were one of the top offenses in the state of florida passing wise and um, then came back home uh, to literally and figuratively to Ohio to be the offensive coordinator for, for Ben Malbasa and University School. And, um, and boy, we had a lot of fun last year. You know, they had hit a rough patch. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be a part of kind of getting them back on the right track. And um, that team was really special and uh, lost a real tough playoff game to Kenston that I probably won't ever forget about on uh, the last play of the game. Um, and then I was afforded the opportunity to come down here now and be the head football coach at Bartow High School, which um, one of the richest football traditions here in the state of Florida. And there's so many that that have rich traditions like that. Um, but this this program has won three state championships. Um, most recently was the 96 team that beat the number one team in the nation that year in the state championship game and produced about 15 NFL players, I believe, uh, out of out of Bartow. Um, and countless other college football players and um, just a really wonderful community and a, and a wonderful place to build a program. That's awesome. And I know, as you said, you're an alum of U.S. Um, what position did you play? And uh, before you uh, say that, I remember I'm a Shaker Heights grad, so yeah, we had a bit of history with U.S. <laughs> Hockey, baseball, football. I remember my senior year, we got walloped 48 nothing when we went to U.S., yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, you know, what year was that? 2010 or 2009, 2010. Yeah, I was on the team. I, I played quarterback. Um, I was uh, not the starter at the time, but I did get in that game. I actually threw my first touchdown pass in that game. Um, uh, and then and then I played quarterback, though, um, for 
my junior and senior year, I was um, – it was a little bit of cool. I was the first quarterback to ever make it to the playoffs twice, which was uh, – it was cool. I mean, we lost a tough game my senior year to St. Ben St. Mary's, um, and I believe that team won the state championship that year. Don't quote me on that part, but I know that that team ended up winning a few, that core unit. So, um, so yeah, we had we had some good good stuff. I played quarterback at Lake Erie as well, but just couldn't stay healthy. Um, but but play with guys like Anthony Bilal, who had a tremendous career, and Anthony Kukwa. Both those guys ended up playing a little bit in the NFL. Um, and so offensively, we had a, we, we had a good offense. Uh, Brendan Gallagher was a quarterback there. He's now the OC at Aurora. Um, yeah, we had we had some good good guys and good players on that team as well. Just couldn't quite get over the hump. Yeah, I was the stats guy at Shaker during that time, so I probably wrote down or probably called in the score. Uh, Eden, thirteen yard pass. There. Because <laughs> I was a stat keeper for Shaker Heights uh, in 2009, yeah. went to Kent, came back in 2011, and I saw the game where U.S. nicked Shaker by with a late field goal. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we've we've had some battles, man. Like last year was a real, you know, we got on them and we were really giving it to them, and they fought back though. Uh, they got a lot of athletes over there. Obviously, they got the one um, receiver right now. He's got about every offer in America. Uh, so they got talent and um and and so we were uh you know I, we never felt even though we got up pretty good i never felt like it was over until the whistle blew and so it was a good win though great win i think the all-time record is like nine and six and one or something now um so it's a good rivalry i heard it used to be like the rivalry back in the day oh uh, yeah and uh, now it's a uh, usc not to say that u.s shaker isn't still a rivalry but uh us and gilmore they call it the Sam Center Road rivalry. Um, oh, yeah. I know you experienced that as a coach. Um, try to expand a little bit more on uh, that. How was that? Man, that was there's there's uh, that was awesome. I mean, both both teams and both programs have a lot of tradition, and and right now, you know, they're so well coached. Um, you know, with at the time it was Zagorski, and now it's Kaufman. I mean, they they've had a string of uh, of really good coaches. Um, even before that. And, and so they have a real good program, good structure. And, um, and, and of course, us has a great coach in Ben Mobasa. And so you got kids that are well coached that are disciplined. You, you, scheme is going to be really, really, um, it, it's going to be effective. It's going to be basically, it's going to come down to one or two little things. And in a game like that, when you have great coaches and great players going at it and, uh, and that's exactly what it was. I mean, we, we, we stole the opening kickoff and we won the game by eight points. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure we could go back to a bunch of other plays that matter, but I always tell people that that kickoff, you know, you don't know when the play is coming. You just got to make it, and 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 our guys made it, and uh, that was just such an amazing game. And Ryan Patterson, I mean, the the one guy who really just stands out in that game. I mean, he just ran all over them and made the game winning interception, and so. You know, of course, it was it was a whole big effort. I mean, you can't do it without the offensive line, without the defensive performance, without so many different people. You know, Jackson Boland, the quarterback, everybody played well. Brian Kellen, but so on and so forth. But that was one guy who I really felt like stepped up big in that game. And but it came down to one or two plays. Awesome, awesome. And I got video of that. It was like it was a great yeah. atmosphere. Um, just getting to cover that game. I'm gonna cover it later this year. It's a really great rivalry. Both uh, yeah. U.S. and Gilmore are really great, really well-coached teams, and they've got great players. No doubt about it. And 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 again, I mean, you're talking about such a tight space. You know, I mean, a lot of them compete for the same talent pool and kids, and um, and then same road. <laughs> yeah, same road. I mean, so there's so much, so much to it. I, I love it. I mean, I love the rivalry. And and right now, you know, U.S. is. Um, this as of right now, um, U.S. is on top. I think we beat them in football, basketball, lacrosse, baseball. Or no, we didn't play them in baseball, but we, we had a good year against Gilmore. Gotcha. And uh, talk about your coaching. You got involved as a coach at Greensboro College, and then you actually came back up to U.S. to coach defense. So um, how is it like, you know, compare seeing it as a player to seeing it as a coach? Yeah, you know it's it's very different. My my coach was was Jim Stevens, and he's a great great guy, a great coach. Um, but but Ben, one of the things with Coach Malvasa, he um, you know, there was I don't I don't know. I mean, it seems to me as a player when I played, it was much less about. Um, 
you know, it, it, there was just a lot less that went into coaching. If that's, if that makes sense. And it's hard to kind of put my finger on it. But um, one thing about, you know, a guy like coach Mabasa, which was such a blessing for me to learn from somebody like this is, you know, when you're running a program, you're basically the CEO and you have to, you know, have everything in line and just think about a hundred thousand different things and um, have your hands involved in, in, in a hundred thousand different things. So, so that was really cool. I mean, and I was a young coach when I came back, so I didn't have to have that responsibility. I just got to coach, right? I just got to have fun and, 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 and do drills and, and, and teach and, and work with kids. But um, as I went to Luther and East and then on and on and on, I've gotten more and more of that. And now obviously I do it myself, but um, yeah, it was cool kind of seeing the other, other way around. And, and um, but I think there was, I don't know when it happened, but maybe it was always like that. But I really think that because of social media, because of um, college recruitment and because of just, um, even even because of specialization for a lot of kids, I think um, coaching has become a far greater job than ever before. And, and it's an important job. These kids um, look up to their coaches and uh, honestly, the coaches in season might spend more time with them than their parents do. So, um, you know, you got to be a lot of different hats. But uh, Ben does a really great job, amazing job. And I'm fortunate I got to learn from him for sure. It's amazing. Uh, both are really great guys at uh, U.S. Um, uh, talk about uh, how it was like to coach uh, Lutheran East because you got 2020, you're dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. You don't even know if there's even going to be a season. How yeah. do you navigate all of that? And you got in, you're the head coach at 25 years old. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and and big shout out to Anthony Jones, who's obviously him and Sam Liggins have built a tremendous dynasty at um, Luther needs for basketball, but he was the, he took a chance on me, hired me. Um, and, and I think it's funny. I think, you know, initially our schedule was pretty favorable. Um, and, and I felt like we were in a good spot coming in and we were working out and lifting and, you know, so much that I just didn't know. Um, but, but I felt like, Hey, we were working out, we're lifting, we're getting going. And then COVID hits and it's like, everything's paused. Everything stopped. Your schedule's completely changed. You know, now, instead of, it's teams that you probably are, are at least going to be super competitive against, if not have an advantage against. Now you're playing teams that are much bigger than you, but pretty much your whole schedule flips to a bunch of division one schools and, um, and schools with great programs. And, you know, that was stressful. And then, and then it was just the extra stuff. You know, there were all these rules that came out of nowhere where we had to take our kids helmets and spray them down and put them in boxes and put them up to the, we didn't couldn't use the locker room so we had to storm in the press box so i have coaches lugging down boxes up and down the stairs every day and kids aren't in school they're virtual so you can't make sure that they're coming to school you can't it's hard to check their grades oh my goodness so many things that and, and that's just the, the the first part of it then you got to make sure everybody's healthy everybody's safe and, and figuring out how to navigate all these things was boy it was crazy and then in the midst of that i was newly married just had a baby, getting my master's <laughs> and working at a different school. So it was, it was a, one of the most challenging time periods of my life for sure. And, um, and I don't know if the record reflected that. I mean, we, we were in almost every game. We lost a real tough one to Brush, who had some real talent. Lost a, a game to Warrensville on, on a Hail Mary. Um, you know, we beat a Shaker team that had a lot of talent. In fact, they had uh, Jade, I think his name is, Walker. Jade Walker. Yeah who's now at Texas A&M, right? So we, so we beat him, you know what I mean? So our, our little band of 30 kids beat that team of 90 kids plus a SEC kid. And, and, and that was a good win for Luther and Easton. We won our playoff game by a lot against Berkshire. We smoked them. They were much higher seeded. Um, but, but I was still young. You know, there's so many things for me from putting a staff together, from, you know, how to, um, you know, build systems within your, within your program and, 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 and we really missed the weight room too that year. It really hurt us. Um, but you know, Hey, it was, it was such a blessing just to have that opportunity at 25, 26, um, to be a head coach, to, to be able to bump your head, especially in a time period where people didn't really hold it against you because it was so weird. And there were so many exceptions and crazy stuff going on. And, um, and, and you know, I made my decision to leave, um, but it, but it had nothing to do with them, just everything to do with, with um, what I felt like God was leading me in the direction I was supposed to go. And, um, and I know Deshaun Washington is the coach there now, so he's doing a great job. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, stressful, and I would say tried by fire was what, what, was what it was. And it certainly 
I will say though, that season has definitely prepared me to be where I'm at now. And and I think I'm going to, it's just funny. I, I feel so much more prepared here than I did there. Awesome. It's like they put you through the fire. You better pray for the fire. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it was definitely fire. <laughs> and on note on that 2020 season, I was also there at that game against Brush. I remember, mm -hmm. uh, I remember everyone had to be like six feet away. I think yeah. East was driving in like the five yard line and then Brush got a big turnover. Man, I will never forget. I, so here's exactly what that was. We were throwing the ball down the field, down the field, down the field. My quarterback, Osai Maddox, makes a great run. We get down there. We had a basketball player who played receiver for us named BJ Busby. And he ended up being, I think he was up there in, in receiving yards in the state, but he, he had a great season for us. And I just remember thinking I should have, thrown him the ball like I there's no I just should have thrown it to him and um and and the other thing we were missing our big running back Rayshon Kennedy that game so he was out and and we tried to do a fake toss and run counter with the fullback and <laughs> I'll never forget Marv was the kid's name and God bless him a great kid just I don't know who it was the quarterback it was the running back but the ball just goes bouncing off I mean Tony the hole was as wide as as a wall i mean it was 10 feet the hole was and it's just the ball goes bouncing into the end zone and they, they get it and that was the game i mean we would have we, we i think we probably win i i mean i don't it was it was yeah it was, it was close but you guys were competitive in that like i believe brush went on an eight or nine minute drive or something like that afterwards they sure did they sure did but again it taught me a valuable lesson that was a play that we had never run before and, and, and what I learned, and especially Ben, really, I think this past season, just working and building an offense together, less is more, you know, simple. Make sure whatever you do, it's 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 simply complex, right? Like you do uh, make sure whatever you're doing, you, you prepare all week. You have a system that you build into your kids' minds and into their um, it's into their DNA that they know, like, no matter what, they're going to be able to get the job done. Um, and so that that even as, even as painful as that was, boy, that taught me a good lesson there too. <laughs> it's time you gotta keep it super simple. And uh, how was it winning, going to Berkshire, winning, and like that was the first playoff game win in school history. And then the next week you gotta go all the way out to Bel Air, which is way over by Steubenville. Yeah, that you know what that playoff game was. Honestly, it was. Um, to me, because it was, again, it was my first time being a head coach, so many aspects going, but it was kind of magical, almost like it was, you know, you go to this school where this team has had a pretty good year. I think they were five and one or whatever. They had a good year. They had a good quarterback. Um, and it was like the first home playoff game they had ever hosted or something like that. And so, yeah, we had never won one. I think Lutheran East had been in three previous um, and lost them all. And, um, and we switched our offense up. You know, we changed some things up. We kind of went into a, a 12. We put in a 12 personnel package with two tight ends. And, boy, Rayshon Kennedy just could, they couldn't – they had no answer for him. I mean, we ran power and counter all over the field. And I think he had about 360 yards and four touchdowns. And we scored 58 points in that game. And they were, I think, the 10 seed. And I think we were like 21 because we were, we were one in five, right? We had lost to – um, teams and um, we had just come off a butt whooping uh, from a Wycliffe team that was like their best team in like the last 25 it was something crazy like they, they were really good and um, but but our boy our boys just came ready to play they were so dialed in we prepared them I do think that was the best job we did as a staff preparing a team that team that year to, 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 to go and compete and it showed on the scoreboard the boys felt confident they knew what they were supposed to do they executed it well and they won and um one of the challenging things about with Lutheran East with it not it has some tradition football wise, but, you know, you look at the overall record, it's below 500. And so at a place like that, when you win a game against Shaker, um, everybody gets excited and the boys get excited and they don't really know how to handle that success. Right. Like so you win and you're oh yeah, yeah. And then you you let that kind of, in my experience, throw you off of the next oh. week of preparation. Yeah. And I think that absolutely happened in the playoff game. And um, and as a young coach, too, I mean, again, that team did a really good job of of spilling us on counter. And I mean, now because of that game, I have a, the answer built into how we teach our guys how to block it. But unfortunately, we didn't have it then. You know, so it's like one of those things where it's like it hurts, 
but it's a valuable lesson and hopefully down the road it, it results in wins um, unfortunately at another school you know but but still but wins gotcha and uh you went down to florida in 2021 and i believe you said it was the first year of the program so talk to me about that season and getting the kids to buy in there yeah so and i'll and i'll just right before i even get to there it's a really tough decision you know i i had wanted to be in the in the building at lutheran east and had hoped that that they were gonna we were gonna be able to work it out and just it just didn't didn't seem like it was materializing um and, and i understand how that can be sorry my head's bothering the heck out of me but um you know i understand how that is you know it's hard um sometimes to so many jobs and so many things doing so um, but i knew this i couldn't continue to do the job and do it the way that i was supposed to if i wasn't at the school it was just too much to drive to drive to drive and so you know like i said i i, I got a phone i got a text from a buddy of mine who i coached he was a defensive coordinator when i coached in college and he said hey i'm you know he was a head coach down in florida now in high school and he had just won a district title he said hey i'm leaving to go to this brand new school do you and it's in polk county which is like one of the top counties in the country for football I said do you want to come and i said well, you know, it's funny you say that. I, I actually, I'm thinking about it. And so uh, prayed about it, talked to my wife about it. You know, my wife's from Atlanta, so she likes warm weather. And so we made the decision to go. And that was, as you can imagine, so different because you have, you can't even access your facilities yet when we first got there. We're practicing at the middle school. We got kids coming in from all different areas, but we have no, you don't know who who's who, right? Because there's no... Nobody knows. We didn't, we didn't. These kids didn't play together last year. There's no system or structure of how you do things. So we really got to build everything from scratch. And in some ways, that was really fun. Um, and in other ways, it was frustrating and and tough and trying. Um, but we were fortunate. We we ended up having some some um, some talented kids. Uh, a lot of our kids though had been JV players the year before because we we when they make a new school here in Florida, what they do is usually they say it's ninth through 11th. And so we had pretty much all young guys who had not really played at other schools um, now coming into this high school. Um, and so we were fortunate though, we did have a uh, young man, uh, who real good quarterback, uh, name was Brindley Vanderveer, it's about six, seven, you know, 200 pounds, got a cannon. Yeah, he was, he was that guy. And uh, his brother played Aiden George, who's, who was a real good tight end receiver for us. We had um, a kid named Isaiah Harris, who ended up being the number one receiver in the state receiving yards that year. Um, Avis Brown, who was our running back, who's a power five kid now. Um, he's a junior this year. Um, Joey Teeman, who ended up walking on to Alabama. So we were very fortunate, right? Like, a bit, like somehow pieces fell in place. And offensively, you know, I like to run the football a lot, even though, you know, I like to, th people think I'm a throwing guy. I like to run the ball. But offensive line wise was not our strength. And so we we had to change the offense, I think, maybe after week two. And we just just lit it up. We had we had a lot of fun. We just kind of played basketball, like fast break offense and on the football field and just throw hitches to the open guys and, you know, um, take what they're giving you with screens and, and take your shots with with certain, you know, tricks up our sleeves and things like that. And um, we had a lot of fun. We scored a lot of points, had a lot of fun and it was good. But um you know, there was we were real close too to making the playoffs, which really doesn't happen for first year programs ever. So we, yeah, we had a lot of fun. But again, and, and again, we had a great administration. The principal over there is an awesome guy. Um, you know, the, the the there were so many coaches that were able to get into the building because it was new. You know, you can hire everybody. So we had about eight coaches in the building, which was awesome. Um, and yeah, good good group of kids for sure. Awesome. And then after that, um, how's the Florida playoff structure like? Because I know in Ohio it's 16 teams. Yeah. In Florida, it's probably different. I'm still trying to learn. So I know that they have they have eight divisions in total. And in the past, I think it was eight through one. And so eight for them is big. One is small, whereas up in Ohio, it's flipped. Um, so down here now, what they do is they break it to metro and suburban. So mm -hmm. like metro division, you have four, three, two, one. And four is the biggest, one small. Then you have suburban, which is, you know, four, three, two, one, four is the biggest suburban schools. And that's like where Lakeland, like where the Pouncey Twins went. And then like the Metro is like your Miami-Dade uh, area team. Um, so I don't know how the structure goes. I know that it has something to do with winning your district to what I've, from what I've gathered so far. 
um, and, and, and that gives you an automatic berth. And then I think there's like a, you can be a at large bid or something, something along those lines. Don't quote me. I'm still learning. Um, but um, yeah, I, I do like the 16 team structure in Ohio though. I think that that was, I think that's, that was definitely the right move um, for the OHSA. Gotcha. And uh, where does Florida usually play their state title games? Cause I know I saw on a photographer's site that they play down in uh Inter, where the inner Miami plays their football game, their soccer games. Yeah, I think that's right. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I know to my knowledge, I think there were two sites last year, but I don't know off the top of my head where they played. Um, hopefully we'll find out this year. <laughs> <laughs> and then you moved back up to us after that one year, uh, what led you to move back up? And then what led you to move back down the park there? <laughs> Bartow after that. Yeah, good questions. And and I'm sure there's probably quite a few people that'd like to know the answer to that. Um, what led us to move back up was a health concern um, for my daughter, right? Like, so she's fine. Um, but at the time, it was something that we just were not sure about. And, you know, me and my wife, we felt like it was best for us to have family support. Um, so we moved back, you know, real close to my parents and um, pretty close to her mother. So we had we had support. And that was important. Um, when I was on the way back, I had had a few offers um, to uh, coach. And, you know, I sat down. But the first person I talked to was Ben uh, because I have so much respect for Coach Mabasa. And um, and they had come off a, a tough, just some tough luck. Again, COVID was a weird year. And then they had a weird situation the next year that kind of put them back a little. It was tough. And, and, and um, but but they had, um, they had struggled. And. Um, but one of the other schools I was looking at was Shaker. I was, you know, your alma mater, and, and I um, was interested in, in in there as well. Um, but I made the made the choice um, to go to US, and um, I think either one would have been the right choice. Uh, but but I think the this this past season at US was um, my favorite to date, without a doubt. Um, it's just so special being able to go back to your alma mater and serve in a, in a capacity where, you know, you're involved in the game planning, you're involved in building the offense and calling the plays. And, um, and then just to learn and work with, you know, cause again, I was with Ben the first time, but I was on defense with, with Brian Kennedy, who's also a great coach. And I learned a lot from him as well, but, um, but being able to really build an offense with somebody who's had success like Ben at EC and at Benedict and at NDCL and then US um, with some real good players and, and be able to build that together and, and then just restore the tradition and pride. You know, when I was there, uh, we just knew we were going to win. I think we went nine and one and only lost to Kareem Hunt um, on, on a, on a questionable call where I was in the end zone, but we won't go into that. Um, but, but we, we had pride, you know, we, we, we loved what we, playing for us and playing for each other and we i think we were really able to restore that this year and um and i knew that team was going to be good after um the bay game you know we had a real tough loss to south range who ended up rolling everybody for a state championship and we had them at one point it was 20 i think it was 21 to 14 at halftime and we we had them it was but we were still early in our process and in our um you know where we were as a team um but that game helped us a lot and then we just had a great game against Bay and then a great game against Shaker and then another great game against Gilmore. And then the guys got more and more and more confident. And, um, and eventually, um, you know, we, we won seven in a row and, and, um, and played in my opinion, you know, to me, it was the best game I've ever been a part of was that Kinston game where I think there was like, I don't know, something ridiculous, like six, 700, 800. I don't know how many yards of offense, but I know we had 450 yards passing alone and, 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 a, and a bunch rushing and uh, man, Sean is, I think it's Sean Patrick is his name. Yep. Oh my gosh. That, that young man is, he's special because I mean, you know, we'd go on this long drive and we're like, you know, we're do, 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 and then score. And it's all like a chess game and everything. And then they would just give him the ball and he'd go 80 yards. Right. He just, cause, okay. and we'd be in position. Our defense would be right there. He'd make three guys miss on one play and then his speed would take over. And so, um, you know, in that game, obviously was awesome game came right down to the wire and um you know sometimes you win those games sometimes you don't um but i loved just where we were because the history of us had kind of been from my experience was when we played a bigger opponent somebody who was real big and bad and good we would we would shrink and not play up to our potential and, and i didn't see that from those boys you know I, I think that they really switched that and and i, I you know you you want to win every game 
but I was very proud of their efforts, and I think they're going to have a really good season this year. So I'm, I'm excited to see that from afar. But, but yeah, coming up, uh, it was it was awesome and just awesome to spend this time with family and to learn so much um, offensively and then just structurally, like how to, you know, me and Ben would meet and I would just pick his brain about how do you do this, how do you do that as far as running a program. And um, and then I I was actually offered a few different jobs, uh, head coaching jobs. Um, um, in multiple areas, um, but I turned them down. Just those those fits weren't the right fit. Um, but then the Bartow job opened up, and um, you know I interviewed for it, and uh, I was offered the job. and um, And I had known about Bartow from having been in Polk County before, and but I didn't really know about the tradition. And when I look back and saw that this place used to be, you know. One, well, you know, that it had won three state championships, that they've produced 15 NFL players, that they got a guy, Ken Riley is from Bartow. He's going in the Hall of Fame from the Cincinnati Bengals. So um, one of two Polk County natives to be in the Hall of Fame. So um, just the, the pride. And then, and then I got to kind of see the community and they have so much dang pride and, and, and pageantry and passion for this place and for the athletics. And so um, it was an easy sell for me. I mean, I said, man, this is just, it's one of those kind of once in a lifetime um opportunities and so now you know here i am hit the ground running um didn't really have a staff you know i kind of had to figure that out but but one of the things i knew was hey if we're going to be successful we got to get people around who know how to make this place successful and so um danny smith who was the head football coach of that 96 team he's really taken me under his wing and i've been fortunate just to have his mentorship and he comes to practices and comes to meetings and gives me advice and we meet regularly and talk. And I've learned how they did things in 96 when they won and beat Bowles, who was uh, the number one team in the nation. Um, and, and then um, we have, we have five coaches on the staff now that are from the 96 state championship team. Um, and so again, just bringing, connecting that era from when they were, you know, uber successful and when they were the, the king, bringing those, that mentality and that kind of um, culture back and pageantry and tradition back to, to now and kind of bridging that gap. That was my goal. And, and it's, it's certainly we're off to a good start and we had a good spring. We won our spring game. We've had a great off season uh, where we've, I think we've averaged about 80 young men in the weight room. And, um, and so they've, they're working hard. So I'm excited to just kind of keep going and, you know, um, hopefully we've got a great season ahead of us. Awesome. And a couple more questions I had for you before we wrap up. Uh, one, what are you look what are you looking forward to the most under your time at Bartow? Like, is there any particular game you're looking forward to on you on the in the regular season? You know, with how good our schedule is, um, every game is going to be a fight. Every game is going to be the game. You know, um, we do play two reigning state champions um, in Lakeland and Lake Wales. And they're tremendous programs, tremendous, um, you know, coaches, amazing players. So um, th those are obviously going to be two games that are, are very important um, and, and will be a good measuring stick. But um, we also play multiple teams that made it several rounds deep in the playoffs. So um, and even in our own district, I mean, we play in a good district. You know, Winter Havens has some incredible talent, a great coach over there and um in ridge and, and haines city so you know every game is going to be a fight and and we're, we're i'm looking forward to just the challenge of hey we're kind of in the an sec schedule as a high school you know like uh, just every week is is somebody who who is deserves your utmost respect you're in a recruiting hub you got florida you got the university of miami you got ucf you got in florida international florida atlantic the sec the acc you're in a recruiting hub. So um, <laughs> when kids break out, like there's going to be so many schools knocking up, the knocking down the door. And who knows, maybe a couple of those North schools, Ohio State, Michigan might come yeah. calling. You never know. Yeah. You know, it's funny, too. I mean, since I've been here, you know, that was that was something that the kids here really wanted to see. And um, and I've been fortunate, you know, I um, I know a lot of guys myself having coached in college. You know, I I just talked to my one of my best friends who's a coach at the University of Arizona and have guys in the SEC, the Big Ten, um, pretty much every I would say at almost every level or every conference. I, I have a friend that's coaching. You know, I have a 
good buddy of mine. You probably know him. He played at St. Joe's. He's uh, one of the coaches at the University of Georgia, right? So know a lot of coaches and that helps. But um, but also, you know, uh, you, you said it. I mean, Polk County and just Central Florida, this this specific area is a, is a recruiting hub. And so it wasn't hard. Uh, just to to have coaches come and visit, and we had I think I think fifty or sixty Division One coaches here in the spring alone. Yeah, um, and during that time, we had three young men receive Division One offers, and I think six or seven received Division Two. So we've really um, had some good success, and and I'm I, I'm excited because I know our best days are ahead for those young men and for um, just the future of this program. Uh, you know, I, this is going to be a place where colleges stop by frequently. And uh, last but not least, uh, what's your go-to walk-up song? What song gets you? <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, man, I, it changes. Uh, like last year, there was this playlist called um, Game Day Playlist on Apple Music, and I would just shuffle it, and it would have like Drake songs and um you know uh what's his name little baby and and all the all that stuff so yeah a- anything with a good beat's gonna get me going um but yeah i, I think any any all the above on that playlist okay awesome uh coach Eden, thank you for coming on to tapped in with tony hey thank you so much for having me i appreciate the work that you do and you know um i just wanted to say too that's there's some there's some really great guys down here that do it you guys do it up there and um, and it really means a lot. I, 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 if the players never tell you, at least I want to make sure I tell you, your guys' work means so much because you get to document the success of the coaches, of the players. You you keep track of the, the pageantry and the tradition, which makes this so special. So thank you for doing everything you do. No problem. It makes it all the world worthwhile. And um, make sure you t- check out the podcast on Spotify, Apple, and wherever available. Twitter we'll and Threads. I'm also on Threads at T-Bokes 2010. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much.